What is up guys, and 2018 is the 10th anniversary of the first Android phone in the world. And we've got it, right here, the T-Mobile G1. And because of how early this device is, it is a fascinating phone to make comparisons to. So we'll actually do some side-by-sides between this phone and our 2018 10 year later Galaxy S9 Plus, which will be exciting. But before that, we've got to take a quick look around this phone because hardware-wise, you've not seen anything like it in quite a few years. Let's go. The T-Mobile G1 was a huge moment for Android. For many customers, their first ever glimpse at the operating system, so it's great to see that Google had really executed its software well to ensure it hit the ground running. We'll see how they did this in a couple of minutes, but first, we've got to take a look at the hardware. This was a transition phase for phones. People were used to hardware inputs, and this phone was trying to create a seamless transition into a software-based era of phones. So as well as the capacitive touchscreen, we've also got hardware keys here. So it's kind of a halfway house between the non-smart devices of the past and the more smart devices of today. So yes, we've got physical press-in hardware keys, and something we haven't seen in forever, a power key that also doubles as the reject call key. And it's very unusual having the power key on the front. It ends up being much more of a stretch for your thumb than if it was just on the side, where your thumb sort of rests naturally. But I've got to say, there is something innately satisfying about clickable keys, something that 3D Touch is trying to mimic, but it's just not quite there. And don't forget, almost the centre stage of this phone is that trackpad, which at the time was probably a sensible choice given Google's strategy of targeting BlackBerry phone users and trying to ease them into Android. But when you look back, when you move from the seamless uninterrupted displays of 2018 flagship phones to this little ball on the bottom, you realise how much you don't miss it. It is fiddly, inaccurate, and frustratingly slow. Alright, but we can't talk about the hardware keys without talking about the keyboard, because the T-Mobile G1 has a full-scale QWERTY keyboard, with a number pad, symbols, and all. Now, it does have a hinge mechanism which looks concerningly fragile. It feels solid, the motion is smooth, but it introduces a little bit of wriggling even when it's tucked away, which is almost the very nature of having two separate parts to the phone. No doubt part of the reason why smartphones have moved away from a form factor like this. I've got to say, I was expecting it to be terrible, but it's tactile, it's got a clicky feel to it, and zero noticeable input lag. And with practice, you can find yourself flying across it just as fast as the on-screen keyboards we use now. Whilst physical keyboards, of course, have advantages of their own, something you immediately miss when you use something like this is the contextuality of a virtual keyboard. The ability for the keyboard to change and adapt depending on the type of scenario you're working with. The ability to install a new look to it. The ability to immediately access things like emojis. None of that is present here. What is here though is implemented well. You flick it out when you're in portrait mode, the OS will flip to landscape. If the display is off, the phone will turn on. So it is well thought out, but it's just not as good as a virtual. Something which, I guess back in 2008, we wouldn't have anticipated ourselves ever saying. And taking another look around the body, we aren't of course blessed with anything close to biometric access. You're stuck with an unlock pattern, pretty standard, it works. Alright, but what about the display? We've got a 3.2 inch, 320 by 480 resolution screen. Not bad for the time. Also, because the phone is so narrow compared to behemoth phones like the Note 8, your thumb has so much space to move around, and it's kind of freeing. The aspect ratio is 3 to 2, unbelievably old school, and we have a 46% screen to body ratio. Yeah, that's right, only 46% of the front of the phone is covered by screen. That's pretty abysmal. Another interesting and perhaps unexpected flaw to this phone's display is that huge screen gap, to the point where your finger doesn't actually feel like it's making contact with the UI. And this introduces a few glare issues of its own. And when you multiply these glare issues with the already problematic viewing angles that this display technology has, it really makes the Pixel 2 XL's display problems look like child's play. All right, guys. Get ready for a bit of nostalgia here, because the T-Mobile G1 is running Android 1.6 Donut. It is old. This is before Google had really figured out the visual direction they were headed in. I mean, it looks pleasant enough, but it lacks character. There's obviously no material design guidelines in place. The animations are somewhat broken, the colours are muted, there isn't a consistent visual identity. We did mention earlier though that Google had done a lot of things right here. This phone was the first to have a proper pull-down notification bar, robust notification system, which would take Apple three years on in order to catch up with. Straight out of the box, it's got Gmail integration, a huge leap forward for people used to using proprietary email applications, and widget support from day one, which gave a level of customizability that people had never really experienced on a phone. 
Okay, this is not a powerful device. We've got a single core processor and hear this, 192 megabytes of RAM. Don't forget though, none of the applications or games available on the Android market, as it was called back then, were even close to being demanding. I mean, to give you some sort of perspective, this was a year before even Angry Birds came out. This device is ancient. We've got one of the most awkwardly designed cameras I think I've ever seen on a phone. No flash, and the general quality you're getting here is very basic. We've got a 3.15 megapixel sensor, which brings new meaning to the word potato camera. But don't forget 10 years ago, people did not expect how good smartphone cameras were gonna get in such a short period of time. In fact, back then, even the thought of being able to replace your DSLR with a phone that fits in your pocket was a laughable concept. What was even more interesting to me, though, is that there isn't any front camera at all. It's amazing to think of a time before the selfie, but this phone is an actual embodiment of that. And of course, Skype on mobiles or WhatsApp video calling were also not feasible options at this time. Alright guys, that was the T-Mobile G1. If you do kind of like these old school smartphone videos, then definitely go check out my one unboxing the Samsung Galaxy S1. That's interesting. Thanks a lot for watching. My name is Aaron, and this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.